Before getting started at building a profile and learning ECUs into that profile, there's a few things to take note on a piece of paper. Things to remember are, what model and size of tank am I building a profile for? What options does it have? Does it have more than four tank metering? Is it a single, dual, or no granular ASC boom? Does it have NH3 or liquid sectional? What model, size, and spacing is the drill? What options does it have? Is it pre-2018 or 2019 and newer build? Does it have high float steering tires? Knowing the above information is the bare minimum needed when building a profile. Any options that are not covered in the above, example pack master or blockage, are added to the main profile after all necessary ECUs are learned into the main profile. In our example today, we will build a 9950 five tank metering dual boom granular ASC with NH3 sectional, a 76 foot 3335 drill, 10 inch space, high float. Because our tank has five tank metering as well as pack master, we need to create two upgrade profiles in order to upgrade firmware versions at a later date by highlighting the upgrade extra CM40, tank 5, and then selecting the check mark to the right. Our monitor will power cycle and we can begin to learn tank 5 ECU into that profile for later date firmware upgrades. We need to confirm that all comms ports are disconnected except for tank 5 CM40. Under our Implement ECU and Manage tab, make sure at the top it reads Upgrade Extra CM40 Tank 5. Select the Auxiliary CPU Disabled tab to the right. A small window will show up. Select Replace and the green check mark to start the ECU detection. This warning states that the drill may change state. We can now select the arrow to the right to detect the new ECU. Once the ECU has been detected, select the arrow to the right. Our configuration summary shows that there's a CM41 that's been configured in this upgrade CM40 tank 5 profile. Once the monitor power cycles, you can then verify that there's an ID name and a firmware version in the implement ECU and manage tab. If your firmware version needs to be upgraded in your T5 CM40, go ahead and upgrade it now. If you're not sure how, we will cover that later in the video. Next, we need to learn the Packmaster ECU into its upgrade profile before we can create the main profile with all ECUs. Disconnect Tank 5 CM40 comms connector and plug in the Packmaster CM40 comms connector. Next, we can select the Packmaster tab in the Implement Select folder and select the check mark to the right. Once the monitor power cycles, you can select Implement ECU and Manage, and we'll go ahead and learn the Packmaster ECU into this profile. Select the Auxiliary CPU Disabled tab to bring out the mini view and hit Replace. Green check mark, and the ECU detection will start. Again, read and follow the ECU detection layout. Press the arrow to the right. Once your ECU has been detected, you should have a summary regarding Apollo CM41 for your Packmaster upgrade CM40 profile. Select the green check mark to restart the monitor. Now you can view the ID and firmware version in that upgrade CM40 Packmaster profile. Again, if your firmware version needs to be upgraded, you can do so here to this specific CM40 only for the Packmaster. If it's up to date, we will go ahead and build our main profile. By navigating into our settings menu in the Implement, New, and Factory tab, we can begin our profile build, starting with Dual Granular ASC Boom, then selecting the check mark. Select the 9000 tab. Select the 9950 tab. Select the 5 tank metering sectional with NH3 sectional. You must now complete the drill portion of the profile. Select the bore goal. Select dual granular ASC boom. 
our drill is a 2021 model, so select 2019 and newer. Select 3330, 3335. Select X-76. Select 10-inch space, grand sectional high float. Always try to maintain the factory designated main profile name. Select the green check mark. Once your monitor has power cycled and you navigate to the implement, ECU and Manage tab. You'll note that at the top of the screen is your new main profile name. Below that is the required number of ECUs to run that particular profile. By selecting the Auxiliary CPU Enabled tab, we can bring up a small mini view and select Replace. Select the check mark. You will then get a warning that states the drill may change state while performing an ECU learn. To simplify our layout, we removed all the harnessing to each ECU so you could better view the connection ports. Our direction of travel is from left to right, with our drill, the right-hand stack of ECUs, and our tank, the left-hand stack. The mounting plate shown on each stack of ECUs resembles the mounting plate the ECUs are currently mounted to on each machine. During this section of the video, we will be removing the comms port, power, and ECU power connectors from each ECU for clarification purposes only. In your instance, you only need to remove the comms plug from each ECU during the learn procedure. All other connections can be left installed. Once you've disconnected all ECU communication connectors except for CM41, which is tied to tanks 1 through 4, you can go ahead and press the arrow to the right. It will show trying to detect the first ECU. If you have more than one ECU connected, or if you don't have an ECU connected at all, or possibly the wrong type of ECU, an error will occur. Select Retry ECU Detection. Verify your communication connection only to CM41 and again hit the arrow to the right. Once the progress bar gets to 100% and verifies that we have an Apollo CM41 name and type in the summary chart, we can go ahead and push the check mark to the right. Your monitor will then power cycle. Next, you'll have a variety of warnings, as well an NH3 warning in our case, as we're doing an NH3 profile. Once you navigate to the Implement ECU and Manage tab, you can then view the ID name and firmware version of that CM41. We can go ahead and select Enable for Apollo CM42, the far right, and select Replace and the green check mark again. Next, we'll have to connect CM42, comms connector, before we can go ahead and push the arrow to the right. Once the status bar gets to 100%, verify that the chart above reads Apollo CM42 name and type. Press the green check mark and your monitor should go to Implement, ECU and Manage tab and you can verify that there's a CM42 ID name and firmware version. From here we can select under Apollo EM241 Enabled and Replace. Again hooking up the comms port to EM241 mounted on the tank. We can then select the arrow ahead. Once our status gets to 100%, verify that in the chart above, we have learned in an EM24. Select the green check mark, and in our management tab, we should again have an ID name for EM24.1 and a firmware version as well. Once our green synchronizing bar is gone from the top of the screen, we can then select for the ECU number 4 at the far right, Enabled, and Replace ECU. Next, connecting our comms port to EM24-2, which is located on the drill in our case. Then by pressing the arrow to the right, again our progress bar should go to 100%, and we can verify that we have, in our configuration summary, learned an Apollo EM24-2. Select the check mark. Next, ensure there's a firmware version as well as an ID name for your Apollo EM24-2. Now in our case, we have a Packmaster ECU 
and a blockage ECU that needs to be learned into the main profile. So starting with the Packmaster ECU because it's mounted next to our NH3 sectional on the drill, we can learn that one in next. Because both of these ECUs don't have a direct tie-in to our main profile name, they are therefore additional ECUs. We need to learn these ECUs in through a different process. Go ahead and plug the comms port connector into the ECU. Next, select the Add New ECU tab at the top of the page, and then follow through adding a new ECU. Select the yellow arrow on the right side. Our progress bar will get to 67%, and then it will change to the new ECU added. Configuration summary, Apollo CM43 in our case. Select the green check mark to view the firmware and the ID name. If you have another ECU, connect the comms port now. In our case, we have blockage EM24-3. So we'll connect the comms port and then go ahead and select the Add New ECU tab again. Our progress bar again will get to 67% and we can then arrow ahead and check our configuration summary. Apollo EM24-3 is added. Next, in your Implement ECU and Manage tab, you can view the firmware version for each of the ECUs here. Drag the scroll bar down on the right side of the screen to view ECU-6. If there's a need to upgrade the firmware for the CM41 or any EM24, select Implement ECU and Upgrade. Here you can select CM41, upgrade both, and check mark. It should change your firmware version tab to red. Any EM24 can be upgraded in the main profile along with CM41. Select all your EM24s to upgrade both channels. The firmware version tab should turn red once you selected upgrade both. You can go ahead and verify that all EM24s as well as CM41 are all red in your main profile. In a main profile, you can only upgrade the CM41 as well as any EM24. Any CM40 over and above CM41 needs to have an upgrade profile built specifically for each CM40 in order to do a firmware version upgrade. We will carry on with our main profile firmware version upgrades to CM41 and all EM24s. Plug your USB with the loaded firmware version into your USB port and then select click to upgrade ECU firmware tab. Next you will be guided through the firmware wizard. Select the arrow to the right once your files from the USB port have been located. Select the check mark once your progress bar gets to 100%. Then the firmware version will be updated in the next 20 minutes to those ECUs. Once you select the green check mark, the monitor will power cycle and again return to the main startup page. You can verify the firmware version has changed from the previous version, again in the Implement ECU and Upgrade tab. Earlier on in this video, when we learned in a single ECU to the Packmaster upgrade profile, as well as a single ECU into the Tank 5 upgrade profile, we were linking one ECU to that specific profile. So at a later time, we could recall that ECU without having to unhook any of the comms connectors from any of the ECUs. All the updating is able to be done through the monitor. When doing a firmware upgrade, the firmware is only sent to the ECUs or ECU that is learned into that profile. By selecting Implement Select Upgrade Packmaster and the check mark to the right, we can then upgrade the firmware in that specific CM40. The system will recall the ECU that we learned into that specific upgrade profile and only upgrade the firmware in that specific ECU tied to that profile. Once your monitor restarts, 
navigate back to implement ECU and upgrade, select the firmware version tab, upgrade both, and select the green check mark. Next, select click to upgrade ECU firmware at the top and follow the prompts to upgrade the ECU firmware. Press the arrow to the right to start the firmware wizard. Insert your USB stick with the required files. Select the arrow to the right. The monitor will locate the required files to upgrade to CM40. Select the yellow arrow to the right. Select the check mark to start the firmware upload. Once the firmware upload has started, a progress bar from 0 to 100% will be shown. Once the upgrade nears 100%, your ECU will then synchronize with the profile and then once at 100% select the green check mark to carry on to finalize the upgrade of the firmware. Once your monitor power cycles, navigate implement ECU and upgrade tabs to verify your firmware has been upgraded to the required version. Next by selecting implement select folder, select tank 5 upgrade CM40 and select the check mark to the right. Your monitor will power cycle again. To upgrade the firmware on the Tank 5 CM40, by selecting the green tab under the firmware version, selecting upgrade both and the green check mark, the tab under the firmware version should be indicated in red. Next, click to upgrade ECU firmware at the top. Again, the machine may change state as the upgrade is performed. Select the green check mark. Next, press the arrow to the right to start the firmware wizard. Insert your USB stick with the required files. Select the arrow to the right. The monitor will locate the required files to upgrade to CM40. Select the yellow arrow to the right. Select the check mark to start the firmware upload. Once the firmware upload has started, a progress bar from 0 to 100% will be shown. Once the upgrade nears 100%, your ECU will then synchronize with the profile and then, once at 100%, select the green check mark to carry on to finalize the upgrade of the firmware. Once the firmware upgrade has been completed, you can navigate back to Implement ECU and Upgrade tab. Verify that your firmware version has been upgraded in your Tank 5 profile. Next, by selecting the Implement Select folder, navigate back to your main Implement Profile to finish setup. Once your monitor power cycles, you can select Implement Operator Inputs and Keypad. Select the corresponding number for the keypad that's mounted in the cab. In order to ensure you have the correct keypad selected in the cab, select the Identify Keypad tab located on the right and your keypad lights should cycle red, yellow, green. Push the button again to stop the cycle. Once the in-cab keypad identification is complete, select the tank tab on the left and again select the keypad ID and the other corresponding number and the green check mark. Again, you can use the identification keypad tab to cycle the keypad lights on the tank. By selecting the Running Man tab on the left, you can view the current monitor software level. By selecting the Borgo button at the top, your software version is displayed here. If the software version needs to be updated, select the Wrench tab at the bottom left-hand corner, navigate to System Utilities, select the Provision USB for Upgrade tab, and if your USB is still installed, select Yes. Your monitor will now power cycle. Leave your USB inserted in the USB port. The monitor will update software required and then power cycle one more time to the start page. Once you've performed a full functional test of the tank and drill, we can create a copy of the main implement profile. This profile will be there in case the profile that the customer uses in the field during seeding becomes corrupt or the settings and parameters become scrambled. You can always switch to this copy main implement profile to rule out the other profile. In order to create a copy of your implement profile, go to your implement select folder, select 
your main implement profile. On the right, select the plus sign with the paper copy. Leave the implement name as a copy and select the green check mark. You'll navigate back to implement select folder. Your green check mark, which is your current implement profile that your monitor is currently on, you can go ahead and select the original main profile. Select the check mark on the right. The monitor will power cycle. Next, navigate to the running man on the left hand side of your screen and then to the inventory manager, garbage can, pencil, and USB stick located near the bottom left hand corner. At the top, select categories, implements. Here we'll find our implement profile names. Select the select all button on the right. It will highlight all of your current implements that you have just created. And then select the cylinder to USB near the bottom. Select all inventory items and select overwrite. Once complete, select the green check mark. And again, top right hand corner, select all. Select the cylinder to USB and select user settings. Again, select the check mark once the user settings are backed up. These files saved on the USB stick become very valuable if the tractor burns or the monitor becomes inoperable.